The time I dropped your almost body down, <clears throat> down to meet the waters under the city, and run one with the sewage to the sea, what did I know about waters rushing back? What did I know about drowning or being drowned? You would have been born into winter, into the year of the disconnected gas and no car. We would have made the thin walk over Genesee Hill into the Canada wind to watch you slip like ice into strangers' hands. You would have fallen naked as snow into winter. If you were here, I could tell you these and some other things. If I'm ever less than a mountain for your definite brothers and sisters, let the rivers pour over my head, let the sea take me for a spiller of seas, let black men call me stranger, always, for your never named sake. Later, I'll say I spent my life loving a great man. Later, my life will accuse me of various treasons. Not black enough, too black. Eyes closed when they should have been open. Eyes open when they should have been closed. <laughs> Will accuse me for unborn babies and dead trees. Later, when I defend again and again with this love, my life will keep silent, listening to my body breaking. Well, we don't know if Lucille is lamenting her own or someone else's emotion, right? But whatever, it's there on the page. There's also a poem by Gwendolyn Brooks, you all know that, who mm -hmm. also has the lost child, right? The same sort of uh, bringing uh, to the page, right, these unspoken traumas, unspoken trage tragedies. Um, when you read the, the critics' comments on Clifton, um, what you see repeated is her um, preoccupation with family, with the struggles of women, uh, with rituals uh, within a family, ancestral uh, rituals, me remembering the members of family. So, okay, I'm going to stop there with this hill. When we were uh, talking about abortion, I am. Um, some years ago, I wrote a poem about abortion. It was about a woman who was thinking of her career, and so she's going to have this abortion, and she appro approaches her lover, telling him that, and he ends up committing suicide. Well, I showed this to Dudley Randall, and he said, Hilda, a man does not commit suicide because a woman is going to have an abortion. <laughs> Which is not quite, very likely. Yeah. No, he's not going to jump out of a window because of that, so I had to change the I was trying to be really dramatic and deep. <laughs> <laughs> really deep. <laughs> really deep. <laughs> really deep. <laughs> I just had to play with it and I would move to take some year off. <laughs> I said, Tilda, that just does not happen. I thought, I'm not going to jump out. <laughs> but Dudley, he, he, was, he was a great teacher. He, he didn't say a lot in terms of telling you, because another time I wrote a poem and I didn't put any punctuation. Again, I was trying to be, you know, cool. You know, he still, he modern. Said, yeah, modern. He said, Hilda, this is not the scourge of a school model. It, it tells you the, where the human voice rises and falls. Yeah. It says what it's for. So, so it, use it. These things, yes. So, but these are lessons I never forgot from Doug. He, he had a little sense of humor locked in it as well. Right, exactly. Well, we should say these are, these are monumental writers, right? These are women. Um, Sanchez published over 15 collections of poems, um, also um, several um, collections of poetry for, you know, for children. Um, same is true of Lucille Clifton, 13 uh, volumes of poetry, works for uh, an equal number of works for children, numerous awards. I wrote down some of Clifton's awards. Um, <coughs> the Ruth Lilly Poetry Prize, the National Book Award, the Juniper Prize at the University of Massachusetts, and she was nominated, she had three books nominated for Pulitzer Prize, so her poetry was very, very highly esteemed by us.
us, of course, African Americans by the five names, by the names, by the mainstream critics as well. And the same is true of Sonia. Um, so many honors. Um, most of you know that um, her working career was at Temple University for many, many years, but she also taught at uh, Manhattan Community College in Amherst. Um, her first book was published in 69, and then she went on to do, did I say 15 collections of poetry? That's, that's what it was. And then several books for children, and then she edited numerous anthologies as well. So I um, don't want to fail to say that these are really major American poets. Um, yes? Uh, what, what was the relationship between uh, Sonia and the city? I don't know if they were friends. Mm -hmm. I think it was somebody's idea to make this film and put them together. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think they were, you know, well, friends. Mm -hmm. It's interesting though, they were peers, right, in terms of age. They were age peers. Um, Clifton was born in 36 and um, Sanchez in 34, right? They published their first collection same year, 1969, right? But they really, um, Sonia is very much on a political trajectory, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, though you could say Clifton's poems are political, they weren't political in that sense, right? And she certainly wasn't part of that uh, collection of writers who identified as black nationalist, revolutionary, internationalist poets. Black arts movement? I'm sorry? Black arts movement? Like the black arts movement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe. Yes, we sort of focus on why, no, she passed away in 2010. Oh, someone's talking. This was supposed to be a conversation. <laughs> Do you know how Sonia is doing? She did not, she was not at the Rockers uh, Memorial because she wasn't well. Okay. And I haven't heard anymore. Um, I don't know. I know that um, <coughs> the last time I spoke with her, she told me that she was going on a special diet that was supposed to have, you know, for healing and curing, right? But uh, she didn't say exactly what the problem was. But she had hired someone who was going to be able to cook and prepare the food that she needed. For healing, just perhaps or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What, what did you talk about? Um, about six months ago. down the southern okay. east coast, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. remember when there was that awful shooting oh, tragedy? Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech. Oh, Virginia Tech. Right. Yeah, she's a Virginia Tech. And she, um, you know, was very much outspoken during that period. Because she had had the student who ended up... Uh, yeah, and she had said that she had tried to get help or tried to identify the problem. But yeah, she's still writing poetry, she's teaching literature. Yeah, because they were part of the same. Yes, they were part of the same uh, movement, and they were published first by Broadside Press. Broadside was so important. Yeah, that's the catalyst for that movement. Wonderful, Don, the Nikki Jim. Oh, yes, yeah, that's right. Mm. You know what? Dudley is not in the crowd. Can you believe that? Thank you. Yeah. But thank you for pointing that out. Um, and that, because that's a nice segue to this other thing that I wanted to do. Um, a few years back, once I published this anthology, um, a different image that kind of comes from a poem by Dudley in which he says that uh, our task, well, our task back in the 60s and 70s was to create um, a proud uh, mask for ourselves or a proud image for ourselves uh, to give up the, uh, the minstrel image, 
right, <coughs> to take on our own self-determination or whatever. Anyway, we published this anthology um, some years back, and we sold out the entire printing. We're so proud, right? So this is the second printing, mm -hmm. and um, the reason it sold out is that it's been adopted for use in uh, African American literature classes, right? both locally and uh, around the country. So if you don't have this collection, right, you need this collection. Mm -hmm. um, and it has a um, recording of the poems, right? Al Ward reads the poems by the male poets and I read the poems by the women writers. Um, some teachers find that very useful because they don't like reading the poetry, but if you hear the poetry, it comes alive and it's easier to talk about. Yes, Professor Paul. I'll just I'll I'll try to project. Um, so anyway, I just want to interest you in this book. There are a few copies here if you're interested, right? Um, we have a beautiful selection of poems by Audre Lorde, Gwendolyn Brooks, Sonia Sanchez, Dudley Randall, Haki, Madhubuti, right? Um, if you're not familiar with the works of these broadside poets, this is an opportunity. So, um, we've 